Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, where for the first time in nearly two years, I'm able to introduce the former world champion, the Zerg player in the blue, the Executioner. It's Rogue. But stacked against him, another champion, though a bit more of an underdog in his story. We have Olivera in the red. A best of seven, Terran versus Zerg, in one of the very first series since Rogue has returned from his obligatory military service in Korea, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. We're diving straight into begging for likes and subscribes if you haven't made it there yet. And Jimmy, what are we? 1,000, 1,291 likes on this series, on this cast, on this video, and I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways, especially with players of this caliber coming back and showing hopefully good game for the fans. But hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better. I have no idea what to expect. I know that Rogue is still at that top top. Apparently he's near the very top of Grandmaster in Korea. Just because uh, they're doing their uh, military service doesn't mean players aren't able to play. They're just not able to play in tournaments. So Rogue had every intention of coming back and reclaiming his spot as one of the best of the best. One of the few players not just to beat, like Cyril has beaten Mars, but Rogue has embarrassed him. There's a difference. There is a difference to those two things. So if Rogue is able to get back into form or is in it, I'm honestly not sure at the moment and we're going to find out, but then, well, with a Cyril going to his uh, shorter, but, but still dramatic military service, interesting coincidence there, but, uh, Maybe it's time for the return of the Executioner. I don't know. Olivera has continued to be a top Terran, but has been unable to replicate that essentially one day of the most successful day of his career. Uh, he's still one of the best out there, but definitely not head and shoulders above Maru or, or certainly not Clem at the moment. Though he does bring a more methodical style. Um, I think he he never stopped building tanks. A lot of players have started building tanks with the slight nerfs to the Widowmine. They've realized that indeed tanks are still a pretty valid option in, in many cases. But Olivera ha has had tanks as his signature unit, both in mech and bio, uh, including that fateful run in I Am Katowice. So I expect, especially with this new interesting creative um, geographically at least, map pool for Olivera and his tank pushes to be still a staple strategy. But Rogue is opting for three more gas gazers here, going up to four. Does he have a roach one? No. A relatively quick lair. Double Evo chamber behind Olivera with a 3-2-1-1. Three command centers, two barracks, factory, and starport in order to get these medevacs out with stim and then 1-1 one, one on the way behind. But it's a, it, uh, as much economy as possible into uh, incredibly heavy pressure. But Rogue has plenty of queens already out on the field. In fact, he's got a Zergling at the third base, delaying it just ever so slightly. The creep spread is pushed out. An Overlord will go down, but plenty of Zerglings are on the way. There should be enough queens in position. Uh, to deal with this, as the Zerglings will help to buffer. Though burns out one. Another one down. And so far, you know what? I actually take it back, as another one bites the dust. Indeed. Now, finally, a medevac goes down. But the queens are better to trade than drones, or a base itself. So, one of the medevacs being taken down. Back on the other side, the third base finally landed here for Olivera. But... Well, the queens, I'm sure, will lament their losses. At the end of the day, economically, it is much better and cheaper to lose queens than those drones. And Rogue was already at 60-plus by the time the drop came in. So I think, despite the losses, I would consider that a success for the Korean Zerg. And, uh, honestly, his, his style, historically, has been highlighted by a willingness to cut off his arm in order to run you over and stomp on you with both of his legs. 
Now, what scenario are you in? In which case, that that would become required or relevant. That's not for me to um, hypothesize here. Uh, what's important is the idea gets across. And right now, the Zerglings are as well. Oliveira heading out with a small force, but that leaves absolutely nothing at home at the third. He's going to have to scramble back. He just dropped four or five mules here. So Rogue able to undercut. And I don't think he killed a single SCV, so certainly not as much damage as he was looking for, but he bought time. And that's something. Oliveira working on his plus two attack. Rogue still on one one. About to finish the carapace upgrade. Those plus two infantry weapons, then plus three. Cheaper by 25 and then 50 resources apiece. So a bit easier to get to is Terran. Those tanks overlooking just on the ledge here. Gonna cover for the Marines and that multi-tiered tank push. Gonna make things difficult. A few Marines sacrificed. So many Zerglings on the other side. But this time around, a little bit of a bulwark with those supply depots just to make things more difficult for the, the Zerglings to get in. And so far, everything Oliveira's done has made it very difficult for the Zerglings. The Queen's on the low ground. Got the Zerglings on high. Plus one melee attack done the moment that this attack goes through. In fact, he pulled back with the Banelings in order to save them from the tank fire. But unfortunately, Marines with Medivacs are quite good as um, I think we got all the- Get off my creep! Wow, the queens get two! They might get all three medivacs. One serp, go tell your friends what happened here. Oh, they're here. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I'm... But getting that medivac, well, two, and bruising another, as well as clearing up the attack. Rogue, with a decent spot here. Hydralis on the way. Infestation pit just started, so it's not like a rush. To hide. It's not a rush to Vipers, but instead focused on that mid game uh, unit composition. But Olivera has not been slowed down. Now, this is usually the more relevant part of this stage of the game. Has the Terran been slowed down, or did the Zerg get Hive? Since Rogue didn't get Hive, it, it falls on to whether he's able to keep Olivera off of fourth base. And that remains to be seen. But the moment to punish it is. Uh, Essentially right now, as Oliveira is is morphing, building, constructing a planetary uh, at the fourth on the left side there, which uh, and just diving onto the creep, scans, gets rid of another swath of it. Hive has begun for Rogue, but Oliveira setting up. He's found another spot for those tanks on the high ground here and has plenty of Marines on the deck. 2-2 now done. Two upgrade advantage for the Terrans. About 30 seconds till Rogue is able to even it up. A single tank on the high ground. He's going to spot the flank attempted, but at the front, the Banelings rolling through. Widowmine in massive tank hit. That Widowmine just wiped out so much. Ah, the Banelings that, that were taken out, actually not shown. But still, a lot of them going down. On the creep is going to make things difficult. 88 drones for Rogue. He's got a full four base economy. Working on five hatches. Three more command centers on the way for Oliveira. The investment portfolio begins to come together. As he's feeling confident enough with this aggression. Uh, the Banelings. Oh my god, Rogue. Banelings have five less HP than the last time you were around. And you can tell. <laughs> Those Banelings rolling in, but the Marines able to gun them down with ease. And more Queens caught and killed. As, uh, with those Queens able to scamper away, he real- Oh my god, jeez. That's, um, quite graphic. The Widow Mines, trying to deal with them. We'll still get some hits off. 92 drones down. Uh, adrenal glands on the way. 67 Zerglings, 8 Lurkers on the field. Or, well, morphing at the moment. Soon to be on the field. No, no, uh, lurker range quite yet. It's halfway done. 2-2 two, two for either side. The medevac drops driven back. Couple drones down. But Rogue maintains his economy. The thing is, though, Oliveira has not taken any hits back at home. He's still marching forward. He's building ghosts now. 
And while the lurkers are out, the ghosts are, are coming out in turn. Nidus network on the way. We've seen the Nidus used as the ultimate distracting. Oh, this is awkward. Um, well, that tank camped in there, but the Zerglings were able to close the distance and get a bit too intimate for the tank. The Lurkers, not able to find the angle. A few dunked down at the top. And Oliveira is forced to pick up. He actually gets swept 40-50 supply off the field. Not really able to find a fight against the Lurkers. And the Bio Army tries to drop out one ghost. Absolutely slaughtered by the Zerglings. Widowmind's trying to burrow. Splits away. Widowmind gets a massive hit. Tanks on the high ground, but Rogue will carry it through. On to the third base. Snipes coming out, trying to deal with the Lurkers. Will eventually deal with it, but he doesn't even lift the orbital. The orbital goes down. Another command center is burning. It will replace it here. Rogue will eventually be cleaned up, and the, the Widowmind still gets some hits on the way out. Does he have drilling claws done? He actually doesn't. So that means the Widow Mines can be taken out without detection. Change in the new patch. Um, so a bit of an oversight there. He certainly has a tech lab uh, on one of those factories. Does Rogue know about this base on the left side? Indeed he does. Planetary done. But now Oliver has taken those economic hits. Rogue has found the damage. Another attack. The ghosts are forced to lift into the Metavax and scramble away. 3-3 is done, but Rogue has taken the map. Plus three attack, melee attack, and carapace in production here for Rogue. Does he have any vipers? No vipers at the moment. Burrowed Zergling scouts. I love that. Why not at this stage of the game? Rogue actually at only 400 APM, which sounds like a lot, but uh, a lot closer to Serral's 450 than Raynor's 700. So a much more methodical and efficient way of going about it, though definitely missing a few opportunities to dodge those Widowmine hits. More coming up. The Banelings closing on the planetary, and any SCVs nearby are going to suffer for it. More Banelings taking the wrong path. Get gunned down by the firing squad of ghosts, marines, and marauders. Plus three Carapace about to complete, but it looks like Oliver is going to be able to cut off this base and trade it in turn. A whole bunch of ghosts are with the army. I don't believe there's a single infestor on the field. No spellcasters, aside from queens, which are a bit of a technicality. The Widow Mines get the shots and soften up a lot of the Zerglings, but there's still so much here. Another Widow Mine looking for it. The ghost, not bad against the Zerglings. He cloaks, targets down the Overseer mid-fight, and that means the ghosts are actually going to survive this. Though the Banelings could detonate, I guess, manually. But the Ghost Cloak, after killing the Overseer. And Rogue didn't notice until it was too late. Ends up losing a lot more than he bargained for. He thought he was, he was crushing that fight. And if he had detection, that might have been a game-winning engagement. But the presence of mind from Oliver, he kills 150 Zerglings. He does lose 10 Widowmines, 15 SCVs, a whole bunch, uh, just a whole laundry list of Terran. Rogue, though, has aggressively expanded to the north in what could very well be considered Olivera's side of the map. Though, it looks like we're cutting things more in half vertically than horizontally. More SCVs coming up. Olivera still scrambling for supply. 160. Rogue isn't even maxed out himself. Adding more and more Zerglings. He's got 87 on the field. We're going to the triple-digit Zerglings. Just massive Zergling floods. And that's pretty much it. 32 more Lings in production. How many has he lost? 500? What? 500 Zerglings in 15 minutes. Wow. And that number's only going to go up. It'd be weird if it didn't. I know. That mainly... <gasps> he didn't actually kill the planetary. Did Oliver get building armor or something? No, he just misjudged it. Brenda, get over here! There's a single liberator! My god. Oh my god, too. Plus three infantry weapons just now finishing. Feels quite late, considering Rogue already got it done. Uh, uh, the upgrades on his side, rather. But Olivera unable to compete on the field. You really do uh, want infestors in this situation as Rogue. Or at least conventional wisdom. 
says so. But it appears he's he's more focused on the brute force aspect of things. 118 Zerglings. He's going to have 30-something Banelings. Just enough Hydralis to be a threat from the back line. This is going to be a massive, near 270-degree flank. In come some Lings and Banes. The Widow Mines will blunt the force of this attack, but still Banelings rolling in. Another wave as well. The Ghosts are forced all the way back. The Overseers aren't quite there. A beautiful spread from the Ghost, but SCV is up to the heavens in the orbital. Or the Planetary, rather, goes with it. Whatever command center was there is no longer there. It's in pieces. Ah. But Oliver still has enough army supply to be a real threat. Rogue holding down the Z-Key. The Zerglings on the way. Another base is taken out, though. You have to be very careful not to overcommit. Because if the Terran army is too large and you're not able to rebuild your forces, well, that's how losses, painful ones, are built. But a whole bunch of Banelings, where did these Banelings come from? Just had them in reserve. Takes out a Widowmine. Oliver continuing forward. The income, heavily in favor of Rogue. But the Mule Hammer drops. And uh, that stimulus package, at least temporarily, shore things up. We don't mind. Kills ghosts and zerglings the same, but more zerglings. Planetary will be enough to zone him out. Olivera forced back to deal with lings left, right, and center. Some lings burrowed as well. The incomes, well, the mules are shoring up some of the deficit here, but not enough, as he just doesn't have the mining locations, he doesn't have the SCVs. More zerglings, that tank on the high ground. 42 kills, 44 kills. I don't know if we're counting that oof, SCV. A dozen more lurkers on the way. Rogue looking for options. Still no vipers, no infestors, but he's making progress. He's slowly but surely grinding through. It's not about being cost effective. It's just about being effective. He's lost 10,000 more minerals, but he's mined 11k more. He's lost 1300 more gas. That he's about even on, so you gotta be a little careful. But the Zerglings continue for the creep is extending onto Olivera's lawn here. It will prevent him from, from re landing his command center soon. Assuming he's ever able to retake any of these locations. Olivera has taken the base to the 6 o'clock, and he's taken out rogues nearby. As both of them reevaluate where they want their neighbors to be. The drones are transferring to that northern base. I guess there's not much more for it. But the ghosts are able to get a lot of snipes off here. The lurkers retreating. Oh, another widow mine. It's a big connection. Will be dealt with. The lurkers still a, a significant threat, but they've been whittled down. Looks like Rogue wants to take out this base. The Hydra's getting a lot of work done here. Trying to slice up the map into his favor, but Olivera realizes it. And there's nothing to defend the northern side. Just drones everywhere. And drones, not a particularly strong fighting force. Olivera's going to clean up one of the bases. He's taking out 17 drones. 33 SCVs, though, have been slaughtered. The Lurkers will move into position in time. And Olivera scrambling. That's just too many Lurkers. Rogue is able to move into position to defend his base before Olivera is able to do the same. And now 118 to 170 supply. This War of Attrition got 800 Zerg. <laughs> oh my god. It looks like we're going to reach 1,000 in record time. Another Lurker down, but... Olivera's running completely out of mine. He's down to 1,100 a minute. And it's just that fourth base now, which is starting to run out of mineral patches. He made all those extra command centers, but they've been whittled down, and he's running out of options to actually have command centers. I don't know why that was so hard to come up with, that sentence. But... Instead of having command centers, he doesn't have any command centers. And that is bad. Well... It depends on your perspective, I guess. Rogue, I'm sure, is pretty happy about it. 
Still mining? How many ghosts? There are 19 ghosts. Then 130 zerglings. How many zerglings to kill a ghost? I think Rogue's answer is as many as, as it takes. He's got half a dozen overseers. The snipes onto the overseers, trying to take him out. If he takes out every single one, then maybe. But GG! Rogue claims victory. Nearly a thousand Zerglings just overrunning a sheer macro play. An old school style, but it certainly checks out. So Rogue has not been slacking, but instead clearly maintaining at least that level mechanically. And Oliver is more patient, um, methodical tank push style just runs into the face of the overwhelming Zerg. So certainly, Jimmy, Jimmy, we're not done. This is not, this is the end. That, thank you. All right, well, I guess we're going back to get one chance. Hmm. Well, we're going to site Delta. Or else. Game two. Rogue takes the first match convincingly. Very solid macro. The only interesting point, just completely um, cutting infestors and vipers out of the composition. Which, if Oliver recognizes that, he might realize he can he can drag things out to a more um, defensive late game. Now, it's not like uh, he he ripped those keys off his keyboard. Uh, you know, maybe. That's what it takes to be the best, but um, if you can, I think I speak for every non seral Zerg and also Seral, but if you can win with Hydra Ling Bay and not have to babysit your Vipers and your Infestors and hope they don't wander into a Ghost or a Liberator or a Widow Mine or Existential Dread, then you'll do it. All right, most Zergs out there. Once again, we're just going to keep Cyril off to the side. Uh, we'll do that every game, and sometimes they'll get punished for it. But that, in my opinion, is what Zerg is. All right. That that mass swarm style, nearly infinite units, waves and creep and just grabbing them out. It's when it gets bogged down to that kind of spellcaster duel. Um, like we're playing a turn-based Harry Potter game between the, the infestors popping up uh, from random places underground or uh, vipers trying to sneak in from a side angle that's when things get bogged down a bit and i'll admit i'm not as uh enthusiastic about those sort of games well game number two though Oliveira, 3cc hellion banshee what do you open up with last time Oh, we went 3 2 one, one. So skip the kind of uh, early tech phase. Go for Brenda Balance there. And instead went straight into... Went straight into the uh, Marines and Medivacs. Which did well, but maybe not well enough. Rogue was able to get more than enough economy already established. Roachhorn on the way. We'll see this time around. There's Stim behind. It's not going to be a mech build. Fifty-two drones, and there's the lair. Okay, there's the lair. It looks very much like a, a mass roach timing here from Rogue. Something to smash. Ideally, a third base. And any sort of aggression. It's a lot of Hellions out there. He's got eight Hellions. Still has the Reaper. How many uh, Zerglings for Rogue? Enough to deal with the Hellions should they run by. 13 Zerglings. So. Not quite enough to outright kill them themselves. But if they decide to run by the Queens and gamble, uh, Rogue could very well surround and kill them. Four more gases. 
It's gonna bring him to all six. Here, as the lair completes. Meanwhile, just buying a few more seconds of time. Olivera actually just kept the Banshees at home. Playing very safe. Not risking the Banshees being out of position if there's some sort of big counterattack, some all-in. Maybe he was looking to... Well, if he was looking to keep them a surprise until uh, he was ready to attack, then he probably wouldn't have shown them to the Zergling at the third. So they don't have Cloak, but instead are just stock Banshees. Still very annoying to deal with. Can easily kill a queen between them. So you do have to be careful with them. The queens, that is. I guess also the Banshees. But the Banshees can fly. The queens, well... Eleven roaches on the way. One, one. Is a little in favor of Olivera, who's doing eight racks. Is he going all in? So, all in in this case is just not building any more SCVs. It's just putting on this huge pressure and investing everything. He's building those racks so early on. Uh, he's got his production already up and running. This is before a fourth command center. Uh, just it, it focused entirely on opening up opportunities. Road Ravager on the way. Road speed is about to complete. Infestation pit begins. Olivera no longer building. I'm building one SCV here. But first priority is getting as many bio units out as possible. I imagine in this case, well, Rogue may max out first, but Olivera won't be too far behind. The Zerglings run in front of the Hellions, give their lives in the line of fire. So the drones don't have to. Infestation pit is done. 2-2 two -two on the way. Olivera at only 64 SCVs. Damn, that's going to be a fast max out. Obviously, Roach Ravager gets there quick, but again, uh, Marine Tank can get there better. Locked in there. Marines drop out, try to deal with the Overlord. So Rogue is doing the huge timing into mass unit production from Olivera. Which definitely could backfire. Thing is, he does have 83 drones as well, so he's not all in. He's got a hive on the way. He's got a lot of options. And if he can keep the army back and start to whittle it down, then he can just use all that map control and superior economy. Olivera does not have a fourth command center. He's about to be maxed out. He's halfway through 2-2. So, damn, nearly just under nine minutes. Or actually, significantly less than nine minutes to max out for Olivera. Well, one more round of Marines will do it. And it looks like he will indeed get there. Oh no, Brenda! Call everyone! The queens will be the first ones down, but here comes Olivera marching in. That's just so much Terran hitting so hard right now. Banelings rolling up. Some of them stuck behind the roaches. Corrosive Bow gonna help out. Another wave of Banelings trickling through. Still a lot of tanks on the field. Reinforcements are making their way forward. Both sides getting thinned out, but the medevac started to be worth their weight in gold and minerals. And Rogue is just ripped from the field as Olavera is tearing through him. Just a solid, strong, and, and unbreakable timing there. As Olavera put so many Marines and Marauders. Rogue had this army composition that was looking to bully the Marines off the... If, if Olivera did the same thing as the game before, if he did some sort of, like, uh, economic medevac timing, then Rogue just smashes him. Absolutely smashes. The problem is, he was going up against, uh, essentially, the same weight class of army. Except, he had Roach Ravager against medevacs, marauders, tanks. And without, uh, Vipers, and without those hive tech upgrades, it's gonna be hard to compete. It looked okay, but the reinforcements were far too much at the end of the day. And we're all tied up on the one going into Crimson Court. And the uh, Chinese characters do not register, so uh, Jimmy 
I was genius enough to write out Oliveira's name so we can put it down there in case you, you forget mid-game. All right, all Terrans look alike, I know. It's okay, some of my best friends are Terran. Acquaintances. Reaper on the way across. As the dance begins, he gets a Ling. Emotional victory. We'll box out the drones. Queen pops out, looking for vengeance. As Oliver dances the Reaper back and forth, of course. Not going to be able to get to the creep tumor, though. Two command centers on the way behind. What is it going to be this time? We're on Crimson Court, which is the uh, mid lane map. Where there are quite literally 12 sets of rocks and a triple thick mineral wall that keeps you from heading out to the corners of the map. Which, maybe you can go through the mineral wall on your side, but there's still the mineral wall on the other side. So that is something. It is possibly our most constricted and has created some interesting games. Um, but definitely can drag out a bit as well. Thankfully for Rogue, Oliveira didn't have any interest in, in blocking the third base, as there's only really one option particularly early. Gonna be Banshee yet again. See if Oliveira, I mean, if it ain't broke. Oh my god, a triple. It's moderately inconveniencing all of those queens. Cloak this time around. So many rocks. Overlord wanders in. We'll spot the cloak. And realize what he's up against. But that doesn't necessarily mean you can do anything but slap down a few spores and get a lair. As, uh... Well, that Baneling Nest is kind of suspiciously early. Looks like not early enough to be aggressive, but instead... Again, uh, kind of a ward against a potential hell that time. Which, honestly, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen more. With the armory now costing only 50 gas, I thought we'd see a, an immediate resurgence of hell bat timings. But that has not been the case. Um... I mean, I guess there's plenty of other valid openers. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Hellbat timings as a, like an end goal. Oh, he just runs by. Um, well, it's getting a bit hot in the natural here. Six drones. Nine. Ten. Well, the tail end of it definitely didn't go as well as it could have. Ten drones for gonna be eight hellions you know mm. it was looking so good right up until it didn't ben drones is pretty rough especially considering banshees are on the way now these four crawlers are gonna be quite necessary but bit of an odd time he had just run by felt like he just kind of pulled the trigger on it because he felt like it and that means there's no more map control for a little bit he's got the cloak banshees but aside from that there's not going to be any way to keep rogue from creep spreading keep him from taking more bases once again aside from those banshees a rogue is expanding in each direction and the queens are already in place so plenty of drones out one one on the way olivero has got a slight lead on it got his third command center up and is there no spore here now that's a bit lazy or uh, i guess not so much lazy as greedy that had to be an active choice but the banshees slide by the spore crawler is a d deterrent. Well, might get a few kills with the Zergling counter. Decent enough reaction, and Oliver only loses maybe one SCV. Possibly just the mule. So 11 drones with the Banshees are far too much. Uh, really, a bit of an unforced error there. 
I guess it was technically forced, but Rogue had every bit of knowledge about the Banshees coming. But still ends up taking double-digit drone damage, which will certainly slow down his production here in the mid-game. He's building three hatcheries, getting Baneling speed, but Oliver already has a fourth command center. And he's moving in with the Marines. There's just not that many units out for Rogue right now. He's building 20-something drones. Or, uh, Zerglings. And morphing some Banes. But... You really need to be able to drive this back immediately. And those double drops are just gonna keep going back and forth, and Rogue's going to be caught between four rocks in a hard place. Hydra's Den is on the way. No 2-2 two -two started yet for Olivera. How many barracks? He's only got five. Actually, a bit of an oversight not to have the upgrades. Yeah, there we go. Well, that gives a little more breathing room, though Rogue might not know it yet. He's up to 82 drones. Trying to round that out, 85, 90 or so. And with plus two, plus two on the way. Oh, here comes a tank push. Olivera gets one up to the high ground. Just something to make it difficult. And suddenly there's a bunch of marines and tanks on the doorstep here. And does Rogue have enough to respond? That one tank on the high ground finding a lot of good shots onto the Baneling. But the Baneling's springboarding off the creep. And while that one tank does terrible, terrible damage, the Queens will remove it forcibly. All right, sir, this is private property. Thank you. Rogue just kind of rips apart that attack. He had plenty of units ready. All those hatcheries he invested in. He has a macro hatch and he expanded to both sides. So, Olivera biting off definitely more than he could chew. Though Rogue can't really translate that into some counter damage. At least until he gets some Hydras or Hive Tech. Ideally both. He's got creep from every angle. Olivera's built up again. Moving out with another group of Marines. A couple mines, medevacs. Two more command centers on the way. Shoots his own Marine. Billy. Yep, looks like our guns are working. Why are you guys always gotta be so mean? I'm not, I told you I'm not a changeling. All right. I'm just special. That's what my mom told me. I don't Then she sent me to the Marines, so... Because she liked me so much. <clears throat> Three command centers on the way. Olivera just kind of controlling the lanes of the map. It's easy enough and, and a little more clear exactly where those lanes are compared to your average map. Another queen gone down. But the creep has been driven almost entirely back. Overseer drags out the Widowmine hit. Rogue nearly maxed out once he finishes uh, those Overlord. <laughs> he lost a couple too many Overseers. But Olivera has all the bases. He's got four, five, and six are on the way. Or he's, at, he's moving two command centers over. Might as well double up. Probably a double planetary. And the Banshees are still alive here, alongside a Widowmine drop heading in. So, Rogue, no Viper, 100 Zerglings, 50 Banelings. So, uh, quantity being the quality all its own here. The tank sieged up, jammed in on the high ground, massive hits, softening up the Banelings. I think enough will crash through to take out the planetary, but it's going to be a costly endeavor. He gets 16 SCVs with it. Uh, Hydras and a handful of Bane still made it through, but the double drop up towards the north uh, may very well take out the hatchery. The Zergling's closing in. The Marines decided to deal with it, but the Zergling count is growing because of course it is. And Olivera's actually down to 140. He gets the hatch. Very important here. A couple of the medevacs take it out by Hydra's on the way out. Finishes off the last one. 
And a single Hydra sticking around. Well, till the ghost lines up a shot. Olivera still has eight command centers on the field. Rebuilding planetaries. He's actually one planetary, one orbital. I like that. Uh, making sure they're both not too vulnerable to the banelings. But Rogue has refilled. And I believe he has some vipers. He has five or two vipers on the... Why did I say five? Well, two kind of looks like five backwards, but... That'd be kind of sad if that was why. Well, a couple zerg. Uh, not zerg. Wow. Siege tanks in the way, but they're blind now, just like me while casting. Down they go. Ripped apart. Ghost taken out by the widow mines, I think. Yeah, Oliveira just killed three of his own ghosts with widow mines. So maybe we should reduce that radius more. Meanwhile, though, Banshee's still going to work at the north. Another double drop. The queens are pulled off the line again. But Rogue is just overrunning the field. Another goes down. Siege tank on the high ground trying to help, but hurting just as much. The Banshees may very well get this base. The Zerglings sprinting, but they can't sprint fa uh, They can't sprint fast enough to fly. And the Banshees, the real MVPs. Another one. Well, one of them is taken out, but Rogue is expanded up the center. Just embodying that aggressive expansion from the Zerg. And Olivera struggling to maintain his economy. He's got ghosts, he's got tanks, he's got a great position on the high ground. But there's no base behind it. Another orbital over here. The economy? Rogue up over a thousand resources a minute. We don't mind drop attempted, but the Hydras are on location. So far, Rogue has been able to partition his units so well, despite the difficulties uh, of the map and maneuvering around. He's always seemed to have enough. At least to make some... Oh, that's an absolute disaster. An entire firing squad takes out the Hydras. Rogue was certainly focused on this planetary where he will find resounding success, but he lost so many Hydras. The most expensive unit in his composition right now for essentially free down the center. So that makes this a, a much more confusing trade. 35 SCVs dead. The army supply is dead even. The Viper's out at the front. Parasitic Bomb on the Banshee. Viper wanders a bit far forward. Actually manages to survive a little longer. Overseer's at the back. The ghosts are sniping absolutely everything. The Queen's... Why are we the last ones, Karen? Let's see. I was telling you. Ghost landing more snipes in. Rogue is down to 120 supply, but Oliver barely at triple digits. Uh, still plenty of overseers here on top of the tank. Zergling is coming back around. And the ghosts! Oh my, slaughter. Rogue with a, a couple tough fights on the field, or I think he'd be in pole position to take this right now. But unfortunately, losing a bunch of his Hydralis. His Hydralis count has been entirely re- There are no Hydras. Okay, the, the no Hydras. There's not very many Hydras. Every single Hydra killed. It has to be rebuilt if he wants that backline damage. And right now, that's exactly what he needs to deal with this. The Widow Mines eating up the Baneling Zergling counterattack in multiple bases. Oliver is going to be left with essentially no economy. The Queens, the only thing standing between this base and destruction. The Zerglings close in. The Queens holding it all together here. The tanks, just one left. The Queen's able to take out most of the air units. Overlord's running by. Zergling's coming back to help defend. The hatchery is badly bruised here. The Queen's are almost all dead. And has Rogue bitten off more than he can chew? Another base. He's scanning to see if there is anything else he needs to worry about. Because Olivero's down to 30 workers. But Rogue just can't seem to break the ghost. <gasps> he forgot Adrenal Glands! Oh, no! Oh, I am con... That is so important at this stage. It's so easy to forget because there's not this big shield or anything to really indicate besides the actual attack speed of Zerglings, which already attack very fast. But if Rogue had adrenal glands throughout all these fights, and there's no reason he couldn't. The hive has been done for five plus minutes. Oh, that's a huge and potentially game-changing mistake. 
Oh no, now Olivera has the army composition. Rogue still has one base, but it's running out of minerals. The army supply. This army is one of, well, army is, is maybe overselling it. The mainlings roll it in, but there's no anti -air. Loses another ghost. But in these low economy scenarios, there's still four orbitals. Mules are dropped. He's scanning for me. He's like, really? Really? Did I? Because Oliver is thinking his lucky Starcrafts here. That rogue was not quite able to break through. That explains some of the extra success Oliver was having. Three lurkers on the way. That overlord deciding to just wander by. But this is it finally time for maybe an infester. Rogue, I don't think, has built a single infester this series. But he has 1,600 gas and barely any minerals, so if there was ever a time. He's invested this in lurkers. Back on the creep over here. Oh, that... The tanks are well positioned. The lurkers will dunk down. The orbital is burning! Meanwhile, one of the ba... Rogue taps out! I... Eh. Did something happen in the center? The Zerglings. The army might come back to defend. Right, this base will likely die. I don't know, Rogue. He's gonna have no economy. You still maybe got some lurkers. I don't know if he just saw the lurkers die. Well, the lurkers die, but he kills so many SC... It's a bit early. It's not good for him, certainly. Oliver forgot concussive shells, but... Hmm. Still, though. Oliver barely able to hold on. And I think entirely due to the lack of adrenal glands there. That key upgrade. 40%! 40% attack speed on the Zerglings. And there are a lot of fights where the Zerglings are closing the distance and actually attacking. That's not always the case, but it is here. So, Rogue going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the top Terrans right now. Which is a bit terrifying for Terrans in general. And I think the only saving grace is his willingness to leave the game in those scrappy situations. I really think that was my, my threshold. It depends on the situation. Like, on the ladder, you got less than 10% chance. Okay. Tournaments, like weekly tournaments, 5%. Big tournaments, like this show match is a pretty big deal. Uh, some hundreds of dollars on the line. I think you gotta put it in the low single digits. And I think Rogue still had much better than a 10% chance to bring that game back from that position. That was a very... You know? I think Rogue is still the expert. But that certainly was uh, still up in the air there, in my opinion. But Oliveira sneaks a second victory. As we go into Dynasty, which is certainly an interesting map with the gold base wall. Rogue not bothering with it. I imagine Oliver will take it as his third. Yeah, Rogue has his style. I'll see if he expands it as, uh, he plays more and more matches as he comes back. So far, he's stuck to the Hydra, Ling Bane. Couple Vipers, but the Vipers didn't have very much impact uh, overall. I think uh, two Blinding Clouds, and then they kind of just died, and then a Parasitic Bomb on a Banshee, and that was about it. No Infestors, no Ultras. We haven't seen a Spire yet. So, so far, sticking with uh, the Classics. As is, of course, Oliveira. But it's kind of expected Terrans will build the same units, mostly starting with M that they have for the last 14 years, so. It's the Zerg who adapt. It's the Terrans who stand by, uh, tradition.
starport on the way. Gold base taken by Oliver. Let's see if Rogue does anything to punish it. Does he not have... He does have Zergling speed. No more gas mining. He's not bothering with the, the gold base. It is just too much of a liability when you don't really have ranged units to start the game. And Queen's unfortunately not particularly viable in this scenario. If you caught Beyond versus Dark, and Dark's effectively rage quit on this map, you'll understand why. Zergling scouts will watch the SCV happily mining. Viking, gonna take out the Overlord, and then it's gonna be Cloak Banshee behind. But Olivera going to be mostly untouched for the start here. The Viking is um, quite a choice. Definitely not greedy, but certainly a, a bit easier to punish. Though, the problem with, with anything on this map is you have the main base ramp to fall back to. You can simply just retreat to the high ground. Um... And there's no easy way for Zerg to punish that because you still got the base at the back. Has to be a multi-pronged process. So the Viking, now that I think about it, actually makes a lot of sense because a main um, avenue, avenue of attack, one of the main ways to potentially punish would be a Nidus. And the Viking helps deny overlords that could potentially provide vision for that Nidus. So I think the Viking actually ends up being a key defensive tool on this map specifically. Um... I hope I'm not overthinking it there. I mean, it's just nice to clear up overlords in general. It doesn't really matter, the map, but specifically when a Nidus is such a threat. Gonna take the outside of the gold base, which is a lot easier to defend for marines out there. Five more barracks on the way for Oliver. It's going to be the 8 Rex timing again. The Octo Rex. Uh huh. Versus Rogue. And we'll see if he's more ready for it this time. Oh no. Where's the detection? This time around, the Banshees. Get off my. This time around, there is a spore. Learned his lesson. Uh, and we'll deal with the Banshee. Plenty of hatcheries here. Yeah, Olivera certainly focused on this timing. Banshee speed will be spotted. He's gonna find one or two more drones with the Banshee. And uh, very relevantly, we've seen this multiple times this series. Rogue just spamming hatcheries. There were three hatcheries in production for a moment. I think he just finished up the gold base. Hellions. In play or in position, potentially block out a counterattack. Infestation pit on the way. That is a lot of Marines. The Queens looking well. Taking down the rocks in the center, alongside the broken bridge there. Definitely going to be helpful for a potential surround. Rogue is building up. He's at 78 drones. He needs just units now. Oliver is going to have so much army supply. The Overseer uh, flew through and saw pretty much everything it needed to. He knows it's just going to be the mass marine tank and whatever hellbats he has left over from uh, the previous Hellion time. But this is still so much to deal with. He's got Bane Speed done, though. The tanks aren't siege. The Banelings jumping the Marines and the Hellbats on the creep. And he'll take out most of the tanks and a lot of the Marines. Gets the supply a little bit closer. But enough Marines survive to go on the counterattack. So definitely catching Olivera off guard. But the Queens are forced to retreat. So each other back up with the Transfuse. And Rogue doesn't have that many more units to follow it up. The first wave was good, but there was no second. 
And now the Marines are holding their ground. More tanks coming up. The Queens, well, down goes one of the tanks, but the Marine count is still so damn high. A Viking just gunning down overlords throughout it. The Queen slaughtered, assassinated. Regicide here on Dynasty. And Oliveira, another just immaculate execution of that Octo Rax push. Rogue probably a bit too greedy to deal with it. And that means Oliveira goes to match point. Three to one so far. God, that was just perfectly done. Rogue, a good start, but he really need to crush the army there. If you're going to expend all the lings and banes that early. So the problem was Rogue had his economy. And he didn't have time to use it. He had the production, he had the economy. But at the end of the day, um, he, he wasn't, he didn't have enough time to refill those units with that economy. Because he decided to do the big attack early. So. Match point. And game number five. Will be on Golden Ore. Looks like we've decided to switch colors. The red color has won most of the games. Just happened coincidentally be over there. I don't think the players will notice. They usually play with their own uh, whatever their uh, default ones are. Rogue in the top left. Oliveira bottom right. Rogue has shown mechanically he's still a force to be reckoned with. But even though he's still at the top of the ladder, I think right now Oliveira is recognizing his weakness which is not going for those spellcasters and not being willing to sit back. Rogue is playing a bit of a dated style of Zerg with that mass Ling Bane focus on just overrunning. I think part of it is that Terran... Well, one, Banelings were nerfed. Banelings have less HP, five apiece, than they did even a year ago. That was the, the patch last year. Nerfed those Banelings. So it's a little bit less plausible to go for the mass bandling styles, especially against Marine Tank. Uh, with so much damage and potential target fire. On top of that, I think everybody's just gotten a bit better across the board at dealing with these masses of Zerg units. Oliveira built his uh, world championship partially off just having great setups for his base and making it that much easier to defend. He is one of the best at making it difficult um, to actually get damage done on his side of the map. Rogue so far has done a lot of that damage, though. He's been able to get in with the Zerglings. But it's just the late game army composition has not quite been there yet. Double NG Bay. This is an obscenely greedy build from Oliveira. No starport. Double NG Bay, 3cc. Getting stim. There's not even going to be a Banshee. He's banking that Rogue will not do a Roach timing. Not going to do a Baneling bust. And I think, well, the Rogue of old certainly would have put that on the table. But right now, seems to be focusing on just the pure macro. Because Rogue, unlike Serral, like Serral essentially just adapts and overcomes understanding what you're going to do and how to handle it two steps ahead rogue instead says everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth direct quote um that i made up so michael scott that has been his style historically it's how he was able to routinely beat players like maru still with the the macro to fall back up but the willingness to both uh, threaten and execute those sort of builds. But so far, uh, just your standard straight up, and not too surprised. This isn't quite the uh, world championship at the moment. Four more racks on the way for Oliveira. He did, this is essentially every Terran's dream. You're playing like a build order simulator over here. Three CC. Double engineering bay into five racks. 
and essentially untouched. Just poking around with the Hellions. Trying to deny as much creep as possible. Rogue is up to 62 drones. He's got a lair on the way. But, yeah. Our no rush, well, essentially no rush, six, seven minutes here. As uh, I'm certain we're waiting for Metafax on the other side of things to get more aggressive. The creep tumor is just being cut down. Overseer on the high ground. Will actually manage to get away. Well. Hmm. Hmm. Well, this is a bit sad. He does uh, double step, but the Marines will get it. Two twos on the way. The Octo Rex yet again. Hydral is done. Out of the way, but Olivera is going to be hitting this timing so incredibly. He's he's managed to refine it here. He's skipped the Banshees. Essentially, he cut out everything but the Hellions in order to hit this Marine Tank timing as hard as possible. He's going to have eight racks online. He's building five depots at a time right now in order to make sure he has the supply. He has only 61 SCVs. So Rogue is going to get a third try at dealing with this. We'll see if he's able to figure it out this time. Got Lings and Banes ready with a counter. There's a, a lot back at home. 2-2 two -two is halfway done for Olivero. Seems to be waiting that out for the main push. Bane Lings rolling in, but the tank... In position, driven away. Rogue, again, going up towards 80-something drones here. Brenda, come, what are you doing? Get back on the creep! How many times? I don't... Infestation pit? Halfway done. And Oliveira, and, and now Key, he doesn't even have reactors on Barracks 6, 7, 8. He's just spamming those Marines. And that is so much tearing. The army supply is massive. He doesn't have 2-2 done, but he's starting the push. Looks like Rogue's just gonna try to go. The tanks aren't sieged. The Marines split back. The Banelings try to trickle through, but the Hellbats are able to box him out. Ricky, the accidental swarm host, is on the way. As Rogue pulls back from his fourth base. Or at least alternative for The first wave did okay. The second wave will have time to come together. But this time around, Oliveira will have the 2-2 infantry upgrades. He rallied so many units across the map. Massive Zergling counterattack trying to cut him off. The depots are open as the rally point was there. But there's so many Marines reinforcing. And there is no fourth base to counterattack to. The SCVs holding the line against the Zergling. The Banelings trickling down the rapid gun down before they can even get there. The swarm hose at the front pops out the Locust, but Olivera is absolutely tearing through him. And that's four in a row. Rogue has to go back to the spawning pool and gonna have to figure out a way to deal with that straight up Terran push. But Olivera takes him to school on this one. And Rogue gonna need a re-education. Still, a solid game one. You can tell he's clearly still at that highest level. But Olivera knows when he's got an advantage. And he presses the point home several games in a row. So Olivera takes it 4-1. to one. Though one of those 4-1... to one, Actually, no. Olivera, the decisive victor here today. But definitely excited. Since we're going to see even less Serral. I'm definitely excited to see Rogue who I think will be playing. He's already been playing in some of those weekly cups, show matches as well. I'm sure he's excited to get back into it. So, what do you think? Is he... Will he ever return 
like beyond or uh, recently stats to his his former glory or will just be a shadow of it we'll see hopefully this made your day a little bit better though uh and if you got the means and motivation be awesome to check out you uh patreon or youtube membership if you haven't yet checked out the second channel for streams more content just more in general you got more hours well i'm not here to judge um otherwise more cast recommended uh, is the best way to check them out uh, thank you for watching i'll see you next time good luck have fun stay chill